everybody, this is Perch. I wish more people would give indie comics a try. Um, the challenge is, uh, so uh, let me back up a little bit. Um, there's a lot of comics out there. And we go through this thing every Friday. We look at about 100 new comics, give or take, that are coming out in the next week. And Marvel and DC uh, make up about 30 of those comics, sometimes a little less, about a, a little less than a third. Um, so about a, about a quarter to a third. And then if you count in Image and Boom, and Image and Boom are kind of the ones, and IDW are the, the companies that are kind of in that not quite the big leagues, not definitely not small. Uh, but if you throw them into the mix and you're up at about 40 titles, you're, you're at about 40% uh, of the comics coming out. But what that means is that, uh, uh, you know, half, a little bit more than half, of the comics that are out every week are by very small companies, companies you probably have never heard of. Um, and the challenge is, how do you promote? How do you know? And, and this is kind of what I illustrate on Friday. As a, as a retailer, um, you spend the least amount of time on that 50% of titles. And it's not because you hate the indies. It's because you know where the money is coming from. It's because uh, your business is, by and large, still run by Marvel and DC, and it becomes a bit of a catch-22. You would like, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I've talked to nearly every retailer, with very few exceptions, would like for Marvel and DC, in particular, to have less of a hold on the industry. They would like for some of these indie companies to... Uh, to be bigger. Now, always for different reasons, depending on the store. Maybe it's the demographics would like that. Maybe it's because uh, they want something non-corporate. Maybe because they want uh, more LGBTQ content, or maybe because they want less. It all, uh, it's funny because people have lots of different reasons, sometimes conflicting reasons, but they tend to all come to about the same place, which is they would like for Marvel and DC to be minimized. At the same time, when pressed, and this is almost always my follow-up question, which companies do you spend the most time with when you're going through your orders? And the answer is Marvel and DC. They're the ones that bring in the money. Therefore, you know, even though people want out of this situation, they can't quite figure out how to get out of it. And I admit on this channel, I struggle with it too. Um, I put up uh, indie reviews for books that are outside of the mainstream, and they die. Like, they, they do not get hits. And I'll, I'll do them anyway, but I admit it's a bit of a barrier because, I, I mean, it, it not, not only do they not get hits, I'll have people come in um, and, and insult the fact that we're doing them. I'll have people come in and I directly say, I, I don't know why you're wasting your time with this. Get off of it. Like, this isn't what we want. Very kind of angry uh, comments in some cases. Um, and I, I feel a little bit uh, irritated, I would say, because, uh, you know, at the same time, I'll see people post comments around the, uh, you're a shill for Marvel or DC. You seem to go for what they like. And then when I post up the indie books, those, those people who bitch are nowhere to be found. And I wish they were because I, I would like to promote some of this stuff, but I think just doing videos, reviewing indie comics is not getting the job done. It's, uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's flying under the radar. People aren't, aren't looking at it. They're, they're listening. So maybe the idea is to do something stealth. You know, we talk about the big two and then like midway through the video, it's like, and now I'm going to interrupt it to talk about this indie book. <laughs> Just start start jamming it into people. But I, a lot of it comes down to uh, indie, indie fans, the customers need to give the indies more of a try. Um, and I, I've done a number of videos, especially lately, about things that crowdfunding, things that indie companies need to think about, kind of this dynamic. I, I did one talking about uh, how you know, fans crave ongoing series. And that's one of the barriers because they, they're kind of predisposed to believe that indie comics are not going to give them. That. Uh, but the reality is a lot of indie comic creators would love to make their series ongoing. They just do not have the attention and the subscriber base in order to financially keep it going. So that's, that's why it gets cut short. It's like, it's, it's not because they don't want to do more. They would love to do more, but they can't get that audience. So it, it creates an interesting dynamic. Uh, I, I think that one thing that, you know, uh, whatever diamond is going to be at the end of this, assuming they're not out of business once the Penguin Random House deal fully sets in, uh, they, there needs to be uh, some level of self-identification on the part of the indies as to the genre that the comic is in. And this is one of the areas where I think that a small publisher, it, they do themselves a major disservice. They can write the solicitation for that comic. 
And I would have the first word of that solicitation be, this is a horror book, or this is a sci-fi book. Be really direct about what you are, because you know the challenge is, the indie books are not getting the attention of the people ordering or the people buying. Um, so they've got to find ways to separate themselves out from the pack. And one of the things that comic customers will go into the shop and they'll ask is, hey, I'm looking for a superhero book that is not Marvel or DC. That's a question I've gotten many times. Or I'm looking for a good horror book. I'm looking for a good sci-fi book. I'm looking for a good romance book. I'm looking for a good historical uh, drama kind of book. These are all questions I've heard in the store more than once, many times. And I'll bet if you know you talk to over Yule at Fantastic Comics, there's a plug for his channel. You should go subscribe to that. Uh, but I, I guarantee if you talk to other retailers, they would tell you the same thing. They have heard these questions before. I'm looking for this comic. Uh, so the smaller publishers, this is one area where they need to be clever and, and get the genre that they're playing in right to the solicitation, right up front, right as one of the first things people see uh, before you even describe what's going on in the comic. Because look at the experience that happens on Friday. If you've never been to one of my live streams, uh, they're all up there. You can all, you can see them historically. Um, near the beginning of the segment, usually in the first hour, um, I put up the comics that are coming out the next week. We go over it. And when you're confronted with this just list of titles, um, you have no idea really what it is you're going. And, but did you know that if you're a small independent company, did you know that you can give the title to Diamond and you can, uh, you can abbreviate it? Uh, the, the publishers know this because they'll put things like cover A or you know variant cover, whatever it happens to be. They'll put that and it shows up in the listing as, say, I don't know, Vampirilla Cover H Sketch Edition will show up in the, the listing. And there's no re and, and but the cover, the comic cover, it's printed, it doesn't say those things. It just says Vampirilla on the comic cover when you actually did get the physical comic in your hand. Did you know that if uh, if you as a publisher wanted to, you could write, you could put in your solicitation in the title, not even the description, Vampirilla slash horror. You, you could you could do that right in the title. And this would be a major help to retailers who are looking to meet the needs of, you know, genres. They do not know your book. And if you go to like, like Red 5 or Scout or some companies like that, by the time as a retailer you're doing your orders or by the time as a customer you're looking through previews and you're trying to figure out what to buy, your eyes have kind of glazed over. And at this point, you're looking at the cover images that are supplied if they're available or you're looking at something in that title that's going to jump out. And putting the genre there would be a major help to you because that's one of the few things that people are still trying to figure out. In fact, uh, Marvel and DC are very much connected into superhero books. Yes, DC has some horror books. I mean, you can argue that the Immortal Hulk is a horror-ish book, but generally speaking, um, people write off Marvel and DC as superheroes. So if you are a, a up-and-coming publisher, get that genre right up front. That's going to help people uh, basically find your book. We have to get customers over the hump of uh, being willing to try indie books, whether they are director diamond in a store, whether they're crowdfunded, wherever they happen to be. We need to get people over the hump. So we need to also be more honest with ourselves of what the barriers are. Not understanding what in the hell the title is is a pretty big barrier, and it, it absolutely has an impact in what's going on. Uh, just like with crowdfunding, the perception that you don't really have any idea of when you're going to get your book is another major problem. That's a that's that's a very common scenario. Um, you know, the people hit, um, and it's but it's an avoidable one. I mean, if you know that there's a problem, if you know that people are going to think about this, it doesn't help to just in your own head go, "Well, that's not going to be me." You have to prove it. Unfortunately, the baggage of other people's uh, failures or lack of shipping or poor solicitations or whatever it happens to be, you are burdened with that association by being an indie. It sucks. It's not fair, but it's true. So the way around it is to, to get in front of it, prove that you're not those things and, and turn the tide around. Uh, but I, I can't stress enough. It's really important that customers feel comfortable and start to branch out into indie books. 
a lot of people say they want that. We need to push them over the hump and get them get them actually moving in that direction. Get people actually trying some of these things because otherwise, it, you know, we are um, it, we're stuck in this same world that that people say they don't like. One of the fastest ways, by the way, for Marvel or DC to improve their house is to get some competition to see some people starting to do and see and and go for different things. One of the reasons why we got Vertigo is because there was a, a healthy assortment of indie comics that were starting to get more and more popular and get more and more acclaim in the in the shop. So this is a this is an area where um, we we have you know the, if we want these things to improve, if we want the big two to improve, if we want to enjoy the stuff we're reading, we've got to push indie comics and we got to get more people reading indie comics. And uh, so that, that's just that's just what has to happen. Anyway, let me know, what are your ideas? How do we get people reading indie books? How do we get people to take that chance? Uh, what What is it that it's going to take? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Recommend some indie books people should be reading. That would all be great. And thanks for listening.